Look up the word crazy in the dictionary and you might just find an asterisk beside the definition that says, listen to the Subiquitous podcast featuring Sue Duffield and you'll find out what crazy means. Sue's travelogue journey of unfiltered stories, impossible miracles, and faith-filled fun will be revisited right here. So buckle up and let's get going with this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint, Subiquitous. January has been such a great month of featuring some of today's super dads. And, you know, along with their families, they are raising, you know, they're quite great leaders in their field. And David Hobbs is one of them, Jeff Duffield. Dave Hobbs is who I wanted to be. Oh, my. When I was a younger man. Is that? You yeah, never told me athlete. that. Oh, well, there you go. He was an athlete. Oh. I was I was not. I was just I was just good enough to be <laughs> mediocre. So what you're saying is you chose to play the piano instead of being a jock. Correct. Well, it was kind of chosen for me. <laughs> I was much more accomplished at playing the piano and music by the time I was 12 or 13 years old than I would ever be I on know. a football or football field or I baseball know. diamonds. I am going to make, I am going to make a confession. Okay. Okay. My confession is as a teenage girl growing up in Pensgrove high school and Pensgrove, New Jersey, I was always attracted to the, to the athletes. And no. then I end up marrying a musician. It makes, it makes no sense to me. But. Well, I don't know how to, I don't I know. know. I know. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not sure what brought you to that decision. It's because you, piano breath man, had a way <laughs> with the piano <laughs> that attracted really? all the chicks. We've uh, talked about this before. I see. Okay. <laughs> You're crazy. Well, there was one wonderful friend. And you know what's so exciting about this podcast today and this episode is that we know these people so well and dave not only is one of the one of the greatest leaders in in headmasterville of christian schools where is that i don't know there's a there's a place called headmasterville i think Headmasterville. okay (laughs) but you know what he married way up jeff oh yeah now i have a confession oh no wait a minute no, when we we knew each other in high school, we even double dated with Dave and Linda. Did you remember that? Yeah, we went to I Ocean guess, City. I didn't even look at it as a date. To me, it was just a trip to the shore. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason. All right, what's your confession? Well, my confession was once I got to know you in high school, and yeah. I got to know your friends. Yes, you had several friends. Yes, uh, girlfriends in high school. Mm-hmm. Your club that you had. Right. As it were, and I won't go into that. We were exclusive. You were. <laughs> um, Linda was always one of those that I, I just thought she was vivacious, outgoing, friendly, you know, um, and and cute. Yes. And you were always in a deep state of like with I've Linda. Always been. I've, I have Shiree always been. Shiree Hobbs. I'm I know a, that. Not ashamed to admit it. And I admitted it to you, and I think I've admitted it to Linda too. That's right. I just, I, I, she's a, she's a, she's a sweetheart, and as, as you said, David married up. Yeah, big time. they're just genuine people, and absolutely. This, this uh, interview went in exactly the direction that I wanted it to, and so without any further dismay or distraction, further dismay. <laughs> Distraction. How, how about further ado? Let's well, we said that, that last week. Oh, okay. So I'm trying to well, stay I away mean, from well, words that we use all the time. Maybe what you wanted to say was delay, <laughs> not dismay. Oh, yes, that would be right. There we go. The word was delay. Yes. With, without, so without any further, because we've already delayed it even more, right. discussing what verbiage to use. <laughs> yes. How about we go to the, as we say, interview? Yes, let's do it. Here's Dave Hobbs. He is the headmaster of Heritage Academy in Hagerstown, Maryland. Here's Dave. Dave, what was in the Salem County water where we grew up that created such great people like Dave Hobbs? Tell me, what in the world was that about? Oysters. <laughs> it's the oysters. It had to be the oysters down at Alloway Creek. You know, that's the truth. I how yeah. they were the were they the small ones or the big ones? They were both. It was a great business. <laughs> Yeah, the amazing thing is that really, Sue, um, the pollution in the Delaware River underneath of the Delaware Memorial Bridge actually killed that crop. Wow. Yeah. Now that I live in Maryland, it's why I respect the environmental efforts 
uh, to retain the beauty of the Chesapeake Bay. There you go. Because that's the best wow. blue crab in the world. Well, there's no doubt about it. And living in Nashville now, let me tell you something. I miss seafood. Yeah. And I miss I miss the oysters and I miss the blue crab. But you're in Hager you're in Hagerstown. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, we're about uh oh a little more than a, a, a an hour from the Chesapeake Bay, right in the middle of Maryland. Uh we're about uh, about 60 miles from Baltimore. Uh, it's a beautiful valley, Sue, that that goes oh, down yeah. from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, down here to Chambersburg, into Hagerstown, and then over the Pocono, I'm sorry, the, the Potomac River, right, and into Martinsburg, West Virginia. Uh, it's a beautiful valley. I thought a South Jersey harvest was beautiful yeah. in the fall. The peaches, right? the blueberries, wow. You ought to see a harvest in this valley. Is that um, right? Yeah, the beautiful uh, Mennonite and Amish farmers are to the north just up in Southern Pennsylvania, right across the Mason-Dixon line. And it's it's just a beautiful, beautiful harvest, a beautiful community. And how did you get from South Jersey to Hagerstown? I know this is, a, you're going to have to go a couple of minutes here, but go ahead and tell us that story. Most of our years, Linda and I were right there in South Jersey. And of course, um, with you and Linda being locker mates back in high school, Back I love in the your late wife, 60s and early 70s. That's you know, right. That's where we grew up. You know, yeah. um, a lot of people think that uh, that uh, when you when you talk New Jersey, <laughs> I don't talk like that. I don't. No. Um, no. In fact, uh, I think Jersey, it's kind of like Maryland in that to the east is Baltimore, but to the west is the uh, beautiful valleys of central and western maryland same thing in jersey north jersey is different than us <laughs> so you know? much so yeah right. i mean I'm, i mean phillies eagles flyers sixers we're philly four. indeed yep we um we spent 24 years in williamstown new jersey uh then we had the opportunity to go out to lancaster county for a couple of years but then came right back to south jersey to Cumberland County, Vineland, Millville um, was where we were for 12 years. Uh, got the blessings of working one year in North Jersey up in Piscataway, mm -hmm. but I'm an old high school quarterback. I like and a calling, good one. I may I may say if I interrupt here, <laughs> I like calling a really plays. good one. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old catcher. I like calling mm -hmm. the pitches, um, and I feel like the Lord has given me spiritual gifts that um, enables me to be a head of school. Um, and I heard of Heritage Academy here in Hagerstown, Maryland, back in the 90s um, at summer wow. basketball camps that we visited back in those days when I was coaching a lot. And uh, when I saw that the uh, head of school position was open in, at Heritage Academy back in 2016, uh, that's when I applied and Linda and I got the privilege to be able to move out here to Western Central Maryland. And my friend, I got to tell you, everywhere I go in South Jersey, in Maryland, in Pennsylvania, even parts of Delaware, if I get in conversation with anyone about Christian school education, somewhere along the line, somehow, some way, your name comes up. This has happened to me at least five times. It just proves that I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I I think there's another reason for that. So much so that Jeff and I were just we were just in Vineland, New Jersey, mm -hmm, just a, mm -hmm. just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And a woman came up to me literally in tears because I guess she came to me, she got talking to another friend, come to find out her granddaughter went to Cumberland Christian School. Mm -hmm. And somehow some way found out that I was friends with Dave and Linda Hobbs. Well, you know, who cares if Jeff and Sue Duffield are singing today? We're talking about the Hobbs. <laughs> and I hope your ears were burning because they were. And, you know, we talk about integrity. I have a dear friend here in Nashville, Dave, that you would just love. 
She is the CEO of Christian Leadership Alliance. And she is just one of those types of people that it's one thing to have a missionary view of life and a mission life, but it's another thing to, even in business, of being those leaders with uh, integrity. Yeah. You know, we can't, you can't pay for that today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It starts with leadership. Um, I heard a long time ago uh, that everything rises and falls on leadership. So I started to read anything I could get my hands on in regards mm -hmm. to leadership. The best uh, secular book I ever read on leadership was uh, written by Dr. Jim Collins out of Stanford University, the great book, Good to Great. And it was an okay. analysis on how a corporation, how a business, how a university, how any any institution goes from being pretty good uh, to being really great. And mm. it is a great, great analysis of of leadership. I'm also I'm also an old John Wooden fan. Oh yeah, UCLA basketball back in the '60s and the '70s. That's right. Um, I own every uh, leadership book that he's ever written that I know of. Every now and then over at Ollie's, I stumble across one because I always have a lot of books there. <laughs> Ollie's Bargain Hunt. You Who betcha. would know that Dave Hobbs is a fan of Ollie's Bargain Hunt? I'm raising my hand. I just They've always got a lot of books. You can right, walk right in the front and there's oh all the books. Yeah. Yep. And a lot, yep. of great, a lot of great Christian books yeah. that are out of print. Correct. Especially in Nashville. Yeah. How cool is that? Oh, that's cool. Coach Wooten said that success, it's a piece in my heart knowing mm -hmm. I did the best I could do. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people uh, beat themselves up because right. of some kind of a failure, because of falling short of a goal that they wanted to accomplish, even a, a pay raise or a promotion. Um, and I do think that somebody's definition of what actually is success to them is an important part of mental health. I really do. Absolutely. Uh, success yeah. is a piece in my heart knowing I did the best I can do. Nobody can do anything more than their best. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe there's a 110%. Oh, I got to give 110%. No such thing. Right. Anybody can just give 100% the best they can. And if they did their best, that's successful. No matter what the checkbook says, no matter what the scoreboard says, success mm -hmm. is in my heart, not a number that can be measured. It's a, it's a, it's a piece. So not only have you influenced thousands of, of students, there's no doubt in my mind, I think one of the greatest influences though, as I watch you, are those three boys that you raised that are now men hmm. and how influential uh, we've talked about this many times. You can have the best ministry. You can have the best business. You can have the best life. But if your kids mm -hmm. look at Andy Reed and what he's been through and as, mm -hmm. as a coach, I mean, yeah. we don't know the background of the devastation of losing kids, what that would be like. Right. Tell us a little bit on how, how you were able to juggle being headmaster of a school as well as being <laughs> headmaster of your home. I was blessed to be exposed to the example of the great pastor, Gene Shirey. Good man. You betcha. And mm -hmm. um, he eventually became my father-in-law, as you know, Sue. Uh, That's right. My, my, my wife's father pastored... Um, over 50 years, he had this little plaque on his bureau in his bedroom. And anytime I used the bathroom upstairs, I would peek in uh, because this little plaque said, the best thing I can do for my kids is love their mom. Hmm. Wow. And I feel like that's, that's where it starts. Uh, the mm -hmm. focus on marriage. Right. And in today's counterculture, marriage and commitment just does not seem to be an important concept anymore. It starts there. And I wanted to role model to my three sons how to be a good husband. I also believe in prayer, Sue, which was why yeah. I started praying for my daughters-in-law way before I ever met them. Because truly, 
that great Christian contemporary song from long ago said that someday my little boy is going to need a godly wife. And I knew that was the case. And, and here's, here's the most powerful fathering concept I could share with anybody. I was there at Open Bible Baptist Church and Victory Christian School for 24 years. My oldest son, Christopher, was probably about five years old. And it was a Father's Day in June. And we brought in uh, a wonderful Southern preacher from down near South Carolina. And this preacher comes in to do a, a weekend Father's conference. There was a nice Saturday night uh, dinner for the for the dads. And then mm-hmm. Sunday morning, we had a father-son breakfast. So I took my little five-year-old to the father-son breakfast, and we had a good time together. And this old preacher from down south, he said, for raising children, do three things. Mm-hmm. Number one, play together. Every kid, <laughs> every human being wants to have fun. Everybody loves to laugh. Uh, so the first the first step to building a relationship with anybody is to play together. Play some table games, you know, uh, go out in the backyard and kick a Nerf soccer ball, play together. Number two, this old preacher said, work together, work together. I had a funny story. It's a true story. My sons deny it. You know, sometimes <laughs> when we... I when love we, that. When we share stories the way I remember it compared to the way a 42 and a 40 and a 38 year old remembers the story. <laughs> the stories seem to be different stories. That's right. But, but as God is my witness and my judge, we were, um, I wanted to paint the garage, a little shed of a garage on the back of the property. And I wanted to paint it that barn red. Linda wanted me to paint it. I went out on a Saturday morning, you know, got the ladder out got the brush in the can and starting to paint this, you know, and it's easy painting, just slop it, you know, it was easy. Right. Um, and I looked down at the bottom of the ladder and there's three <laughs> little boys standing there Uh-oh. and they look up. They're probably, I would guess eight, six and four. And they look up the ladder and say, daddy, can we help? <laughs> now I've got, I've got barn red, <laughs> paint boy do i not want a no. four six and an eight year old helping at the same time i didn't want to discourage them plus if i said no you can't help they'll go back in the house and drive their mother crazy that's true so i, I picked up three old tupperware containers little plastic bowls i put a drop of paint in each of the little plastic tupperware containers filled them each with water and gave each of the three little boys a paintbrush. Well, they dipped that paintbrush and put it up against the red, you know, peeling old garage of a barn. And yeah, it was wet. They painted all day. I had to make (laughs) them stop. I had to make them stop to go in and get a drink of water and a peanut butter sandwich at lunchtime. They painted all day. And I had no problem because I, I did my painting all around them. And where do we go next? Dad, I'll go around the back. We've got to get to the back of the paint back there. Um, and to this day, they swear, Dad, that paint was red. <laughs> and the wall was wet. Why do you tell that story like that? So number one, I say play together. Yeah. Number two, that old Southern preacher taught me work together. Mm -hmm. I believe if we want to influence somebody, we got to be doing something together. I don't care if it's working on a car, you know, or sports or fishing or mowing or paint. When you work together, you build a relationship with somebody. And then number three, that old preacher said, pray together, Mm -hmm. Uh, making sure that, um, you know, we're at a church with our family, you know, making sure that Uh, We open up the word of God sometimes with family devotions, you know, the Thanksgiving dinner table, you know, with a praise reading. Um, So I say, Sue Duffield, um, Mm. play together, work together, pray together. You know, I've often wondered, too, our dads were, you know, factory workers, right? Yeah, my dad worked Uh, over there at DuPont's. 
Yeah, and so did mine. We have so many similarities growing up in that little community of Carney's Point, Pensgrove, New Jersey. Uh, who would know, seriously, though? In our high school, Pensgrove High School, there have been so many incredibly successful stories of of our classmates, even in your class. You were just a, a couple of years ahead of me. Only one. Uh, only Actually, only one. That's right. Correct. What am I saying? Yeah, you're 73. <laughs> I'm 72. <laughs> Not in age, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <But> Class <laughs> of. <laughs> what do you see now, you know, as an educator yourself, why are parents putting their kids even more, I think, more than ever before in Christian schools? Here's something I've learned in the last two years, Sue. Technology is making everything happen faster. Technology accelerates everything. So therefore, yeah, kids are growing up faster today than they used to. Mm. Um, even back in the 90s, Sue, when I first became a principal, I, I knew that uh, for, a, for a private Christian school, school discipline was job one. Mm -hmm. And the seventh and eighth graders were driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Junior high. I can only imagine. Yeah. Right. So um, I started to put some extra efforts into trying to work with the seventh and eighth graders, teaching them concepts of character, the John Wooden pyramid of success, Benjamin Franklin's 13 virtues, all these character trait building systems. But you know, now that we're in the third decade of the 21st century, mm, which is hard to imagine, the issues that I was working with with seventh and eighth graders 30 years ago are now fourth and fifth graders. In fact, um, uh, Dr. Ken Ham, uh, the guy who built the ark out there in Kentucky. Yes. Dr. Ham has written a lot of books. I didn't know that. But in one of his books, he says that fifth grade is the new junior high. Wow. So what we were doing in seventh and eighth grade, we need to start doing mm -hmm. this two, maybe three years earlier. Um, and I think that is a very, very powerful influence. I really do. I also think that um, it's important for uh, all educators to be authentic. Mm -hmm. Kids know when we're trying to bluff them. Right. They see right through us in no time. And we're talking about third graders. Right. We're talking about second graders. You know, they can see when we're, when we're bluffing. Sue, you'll like this story. Here's one you've never heard before. In 1986, I was asked to coach the field hockey team. There you go. Did you ever play field hockey? No, but Linda did. I didn't. You played tennis. That's right. You were good yeah. at tennis. Not so, uh, it all depends on who you talk to. <laughs> I went into the first field hockey practice, you know, and I said, girls, I got to be honest with you. I don't know field hockey. Now, I've been studying it for the last two weeks since I found out two weeks ago that they want me to coach field hockey. <laughs> so I know the rules sounds a lot like soccer, 11 on 11, there's goalies. Um, and most of all, girls, I can run you into shape every practice, every day. Conditioning is important, but I'll tell you, girls, this stick skills. I don't understand this stick skills at all, and you're going to have to teach me. My point is, got to be you got to be upfront, got to be authentic. Nowadays, I have so many students who are teaching me technology. I don't doubt that, and I appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it. You know, everybody knows something I don't know, so everybody's my teacher. That's right. So I think two issues is just the way kids grow faster today. Yeah, uh, because of technology and because of the fact that we got to be authentic. Right. And Hagerstown Academy, where you've been now, how many years now? I'm in my sixth year at Heritage Academy. Six. Oh, my goodness. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I keep thinking of not only are you affecting the children and, of course, teenagers at your school, but it's really a family scenario where you're really ministering to the family as well. It's not Absolutely. just the, the child. Yeah. There was something that came across my, uh, I'll say my desk, but that's not true. It came across my phone today that I wanted to talk to you about too, that uh, happened here in the state of Tennessee. 
John Rich, who is a very popular country singer here in town, part of the group called Big and Rich, uh, he showed up at a school board meeting recently with illustrations from his son's textbook from public school and draw, drew it out on a poster board, and they wouldn't let him bring the poster board in saying they were inappropriate. So then he said, well, that's what you're teaching my child. So he set an appointment with the Tennessee governor, Governor Lee here, and asked him, if your grandson came to my house and I showed him this picture, what would you do? And this is what General, or I should say Governor Lee said. He said, I would have you arrested. And John Rich said, exactly. And this is what you're teaching my child at school. Yeah. It's bad enough with the critical race theory that's going on. Um, I never thought as, as Christian education as, as an exception. I always thought it was like, this is powerful stuff because the public school is not going in the dimension of our spirit man. But at the same time, have you seen people who have, I'm sure you've had families asking you questions. I'm, I'm tired of what's being taught outside of the realm of Christian mm -hmm. education and, and we need help. And yeah. reading something like this today just confirms my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It all starts with Bible based values. Mm -hmm. uh, again, mental health issues. Um, Sue, I believe that because God created the earth and God created humankind in his image, there's three powerful words, in his image. Uh, that means that every human being has value. No human being's an accident. No. Every child has a purpose in the plan of God for why God wanted that human being come into existence. Yeah. And when we're all born in his image, uh, that means that when we follow, when we follow Bible values, we fi follow Bible ideas as to how we should live our lives. It's like, it's like the Bible is a, uh, is a car manual that we have in our glove mm -hmm. compartment, you know? Right. Um, right. And when we take care of our cars, as per that little book in our glove compartment, we change the oil we're supposed to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, care of the tires, um, all of the care of the of the of the vehicle by that book. That's right. That vehicle works great. Uh, the same thing with the Bible. When we mm -hmm. when we do things like the Bible recommends, marriage, uh, God created us male and female, there's clearly an X chromosome and, and a Y chromosome, and that's science. Mm -hmm. Then we mm -hmm. follow the Bible's way of doing things. Life comes out pretty good. Yeah. Now, just, just don't forget, though, that God loves to use the concept of struggle, the mm -hmm. concept of suffering, the concept mm -hmm. of difficulty and troubles and trials and tribulations for us to be able to learn and mm -hmm. grow and be challenged. But I do think it starts with in his image. Every human being is created in his image. And you have had such great respect coming, but I also see you showing respect as well, respecting your peers, respecting your mm -hmm. staff, respecting your, your sons and their daughter and their, well, you have how many granddaughters? One, is it? Yeah, we have five granddaughters, four grandsons. Oh, that's right. Five yeah. granddaughters yep. and four grandsons. Yeah. That blows my mind. <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, the oldest ones down in Houston, Texas. In fact, Jennifer, my daughter-in-law, is uh, developing a new student support system um, for helping students who learn in different fashions, in different ways. I love that. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, three three grandchildren there. Our oldest grandchild is a junior at Palm Beach Atlantic uh, College there in South Florida. Uh, yeah. Then uh, we have one of our families is close to us here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. That's uh, Brian is the guidance counselor and athletic director at Faith Christian Academy in Martinsburg, West Virginia. And then Mark the youngest one is out there at Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, Lancaster right. County Christian School. And his wife uh, teaches the junior high math, 
three grandchildren in all three cities, Martinsburg, That's West awesome. Virginia, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and Houston, Texas. I can't even fathom the thought that you have nine grandchildren. It just blows my mind. It blows my mind. Okay, Dave, before we quit today, I, a couple of things I want you to do. I want you to tell me one of the funniest experiences you've ever had, bar none. What is your go-to story when somebody asks you, Dave, what's either the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you or what's a, what's a funny story? I love the story with the paint with the kids. That's mm -hmm. great. But there, there's, I'm sure you've got another one. And then number two, Give us a little bit of a, a plug at the end about your school there in Hagerstown, okay. because there are many listeners that are in mm -hmm. your area that might be looking to uh, take advantage of the fact yeah, of this yeah. great Christian school. Yeah. All right. Um, plenty of stories in which I was a total doofus. I love sweater vests. Okay. I still do. Um, I don't like wearing a jacket to school. Um, my board wants me to wear a shirt and tie. Uh, they right. want me to wear a tie. But in the winter here, um, I just like a sweater vest. It's just so comfortable. My arms are free to move on my school day, you know. And it was Grandparents' Day. And, man, it was a big day at Heritage Academy. Oh, grandparents coming in. A uh, great program. The kids are all excited. And I had my sweater vest on inside out. <laughs> With the tag out in the back. The tag was in the back. There it was. <laughs> and I was in front of 250 grandparents. <laughs> and one of the teenagers, one of my high school teenagers who 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 liked Mr. Hobbs. Hey, uh -huh. uh, Mr. Hobbs, Mr. Hobbs, I think your sweater vest is on inside out. And I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness. And I was already standing in front of the people. You know, now it was fortunately that kind of vest. It was a plain, solid color, though it didn't have a design. You couldn't tell standing right in front of people. So when I left the room, I had to like slide out. I couldn't turn my back to the crowd. Uh, <laughs> I went out, I actually went outside, out the side exit, you know, one of those fire exits real quick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right, right, right back in the program, like nothing happened. So that's that's one of my favorite one of my favorite Your doofus. Best. I am a doofus story. <laughs> I love it though. But you know what? We're human. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's that right. Happens. And then Heritage Academy. Tell me about that. It's awesome. Um, Heritage Academy. Um, I love Heritage Academy because it was established in 1969 when prayer and Bible reading was taken out of the public schools in 1963, 64. That right. was when. A lot of churches, a lot of groups, a lot of local people so started to start talking about this Christian school thing. Opened in 1969 and really has been in existence ever since. The school, uh, the enrollment began to fade about 10 years ago. And of course, a lot of smaller schools have had trouble economically staying open. Sure. And there have been a lot of closures Prior to COVID, right. what has happened here in the COVID world is that because so many families uh, want to be able to have uh, on-site education, uh, we're mm -hmm. small. We have 217 students now, but we're small, so we can social distance. Right. It's easy to be able to do the uh, sanitation cleaning that we've been doing the last two years because yeah. we're small. We're not big. It's easy to be able to lock down Heritage Academy. We're one building right. with four entrance doors. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to lock it down in a real safe kind of way. So a lot of the issues that have been cropping up um, the last two years with COVID, um, the last 20 years with a change of morality here in America, uh, yeah. the Christian school supplies those kinds of answers that parents are looking to teach their children. Right. So with Heritage Academy having all the biblical emphasis, uh, teaching from the biblical worldview, so science, we teach that God created the earth. History, we teach that, yeah, you can see the sin of humankind by studying history. Yes, mm -hmm. you can. And we discuss those kinds of issues. And in today's 
um, racial challenges of America when we use the biblical worldview where, where the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. When Martin Luther King, and by the way, today's Martin Luther King Day, happy MLK Day, yeah. when he said that he looked forward to the day when a man would not be judged by the color of his skin, right. but by the content of his character. That's right. And the biblical worldview accomplishes that. Plus, right. um, Heritage Academy has wonderful academic program, including dual enrollment in the high school, so they can do college classes while you're doing high school classes, let alone great reading program with the younger children, academically speaking. Got all the uh, extras with the school play, the music program, the sports, the computers. I mean, it just it just has everything a pair of parents need, you know, yeah. a mom and a dad need uh, sure. to see their children grow, uh, to be in a in a position mentally, intellectually, um, their attitudes spiritually to accomplish whatever is God's purpose for their lives. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dave. And you know what? We do have a lot in common besides growing up in the same town, besides <laughs> going to the same high school, besides, listen to this, besides thinking that Linda Shirey Hobbs is, is, is a top-notch you know, it's brilliant. She's another podcast episode. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> but there's is. another th there's another thing that you talked about that I want to agree with you on, and we'll end with this: mentorship, heroes of the faith, people that influence us. For me personally, as well, there was no one better than Pastor Gene Shirey of Amen. Calvary Baptist Church, right there in Carney's Point. Yep. What an integral spiritual influence he was in my life. Yeah. And I know he was proud of you. Mm -hmm. I know that he would know right now that you're just doing amazing things for God. And mm -hmm. I just appreciate your Amen. walk. And who would know? Who would yep. know that Gene Shy would, yep. would affect so yep. many people? <laughs> he was the role model that I yep. watched. And he was so cool he back in cool. 1969, back in 1971. Man, he was so cool. <laughs> yep. Big voice, man. Yep, yes, yep. yes. Yep. Well, Dave, we'll have you on again, I promise. And uh, we thank mm -hmm. you so much. And thank you for being such a great leader. But best of all, thanks for being such a great friend. Amen. What a good time, Sue. Our hope here on the Subiquitous Podcast is to bring to light some of those unsung and behind-the-scenes heroes like Dave, whose story needs to be heard. So thank you for your continuing support of Sue Duffield Ministries and our virtual outreach as we cover over 27 nations. It's amazing. Hit that donate button today at SueDuffield.com and we'll be happy to send you a virtual gift of a download of any of our albums. We are so grateful for your support as this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint continues to navigate new territory. 